Good evening. I'm here to talk about a new budgeting process for fiscal year 19 for SAU number 39. The administration, the building principals, and the business department have been working hard to develop a new budgeting process that makes the budget more accessible, more transparent, more accurate, and provides more coordination between the various entities involved in budget development. First, there are lots of people who want to access the budget. We want it to be highly accessible so someone can go to whatever level of depth they'd like to go easily and quickly. Next, we want the budget to be transparent so that all the information is available. The information submitted by people who've made budget requests should also be available to all the people who review and eventually approve the budget, including voters. Next, we want the budget to be highly accurate, which means we need a system that reduces steps and reduces translation so that the budget information goes directly from the source to the people reviewing the budget. And finally, we want a more coordinated effort so that the finance committees that are involved in budget development have exclusive time to review and then report back to the school boards their findings and their recommendations about the budget. What this means is that we see a slightly different schedule for budget development, where the budget is submitted from the, the superintendent to the school board for a preliminary review in late September or early October, depending on the school board. After the board has a preliminary review of the budget, we want it to go to the finance committees during the month of October and early November so that, that the finance committees in each district have time to themselves to review the budget and then provide input, including a report along with recommendations back to the school board. Then school boards would have the entire rest of the month of November and December for their own review with all the information gathered from the administration and their finance committee to help inform their decision-making process. We think this streamlines the effort and makes the coordination between the finance committees, the administration, and the school board much simpler and a more linear process. The solution we're recommending is moving away from budgeting directly in infinite visions and instead using a Google spreadsheet uh, for all of our budgeting process. I want to show you what that spreadsheet looks like and how it will work uh, for all stakeholders that are involved in the process. First, budgeting starts through a form. The folks that submit budget requests will do, th do so through a Google form that makes it easy for them to enter information about their budgets and also reduces the complexity involved for them in dealing with the Google spreadsheet. A user will simply enter the account number, the item they're budgeting, how much it costs, and any backup information they have if they have it. Users could even attach a file or include notes for those who are reviewing the budget to help explain further their budget request. After submitting their budget request, it will automatically go to a spreadsheet that includes all the information that will be used during the budget development process. The crux of this spreadsheet is that there is a section for every single account that shows all of the detail, all of the analysis, and even all of the questions about that account for everyone involved in the budget process. Here's what that looks like. For this particular account, you can see there are a number of items listed along with all the backup information for those items. Below in the blue section, there's a spot where we'll track every version of the budget, including what the school originally proposed, what the superintendent ultimately recommended, what the advisory finance committee recommends, and then what the school board deliberative session and even the default budget uh, versions of the budget looks like. Next in the light gray section, we have some analysis that shows what we spent in that account the last three fiscal years, the average of those three years, and then what the current year's budget number for that account looks like. And we can compare all of those numbers in either uh, with red or green indicators to show whether the proposed budget is higher or lower than all of those indicators from previous years. Next in the pink section, we have a place for notes about the account uh, that can be provided to anyone who's reviewing the budget. And then in the yellow section will be all the information about the default budget calculation for that account including notes, uh, any one-time expenditures that are removed from the budget, any contractual expenses, and then what the fiscal year 19 default budget calculation looks like. 
In the light blue section, we have a budget forecast. We're going to provide a three-year forecast for every account number that shows what we anticipate moving forward. And while these are just forecasts, we think they will give the school board and finance committees and the public insight into what may be coming down the pike for those particular accounts. One of the, the best parts about this spreadsheet is the ability for people to ask questions about a specific account and for those questions and their answers to all appear for anyone else who's reviewing that account number. Through a Google form, a separate Google form, members of the finance committee, the school board, or even the public can submit questions about an account. Once that question gets submitted, it'll automatically appear underneath the account in the dark gray section. And then once answers are provided, we'll be able to see those answers and everyone who reviews the budget will see those questions and their answers. We think this will highly simplify the process we experienced last year with multiple questions coming from different sources and trying to coordinate those responses. So every single account number will have one of these pages in the budget. It appears in a long list of, of pages here that if someone wants to go to that level of depth, they'll be able to do that. We also made it so that if someone wants to print off this entire set of pages, they'll print one per page and we'll make it easy for people who want hard copies of the budget to review. Next, we have different levels of analysis uh, for the budget. First, if someone wants to review all the account numbers submitted by a principal or by a department head, they'll be able to do that on this page where they select the principal or department head and are able to review all sorts of analysis about those, those account numbers that were submitted. Next, for the finance committee members, there's a page where, where they will be able to review all of the account numbers that are assigned to their area of responsibility and see those uh, information about those in depth. There's also a page that summarizes for the finance committees their sections and shows some, some uh, summary analysis for those pages. For people who just want the bottom line, there's a summary page that shows the entire budget and what it looks like as a bottom line number where folks can review what's the bottom line for the budget. Those who want to review by object code can find that on this page. Those who want to review by function code can do it on this page. Even by fund, there's this page that displays budgetary information by fund. Moving forward, we even have places where people can review all of the war articles as they're proposed, what their status looks like as they are being prepared, and then on a separate page, a pro forma of the tax impact that we're expecting for the budget. We have pages that describe the default budget, including all the detail, and then an analysis that shows the differences between the default budget and the proposed budget. We've also included pages that prepare the MS-26 forms in detail and the MS-22 that's prepared after the budget process is completed. All of these pages uh, will be updated in real time as, uh, as folks submit their budgetary requests. So we'll be able to track in real time as changes are made, how it affects all different sections of the budget and the different pieces of analysis. There's even a, histor a historical section that shows the previous six years, the budget appropriations, worn articles, revenues, total expenditures, and even the breakdown in, in the case of the Sauhegan budget of the apportionment between Amherst and Mont Vernon. In short, we think this new budget process will help us achieve our objectives of a more accessible, transparent, and accurate budgeting process. We think we'll spend more time this year discussing the merits of a budget proposal and how those budget proposals affect student learning than we will worrying about coordinating information and, uh, and coordinating meetings between various groups of people. By having all the information in one, in one place, we think that we'll achieve that objective. I want to point out that this budgetary uh, process didn't cost us a thing. It was developed internally uh, using free tools and using the, the skills of some of the folks in the business office who I think did a, a tremendous job uh, putting this together. I want to thank Stephanie Grund and Katie uh, Hannon in particular for their work in, in helping to develop this budgetary process. Anyone who has questions about this budget process or has any feedback or input, uh, please email me or give me a call or even stop by and I'd love to meet, to, to meet with you to hear your, your input about this process. Uh, we'll learn from it this year and make it better as we move forward. Uh, but the bottom line is we think that this 
process will make things better for kids as we'll spend less time coordinating budgetary uh, development issues and more time talking about uh, what's really important and how those things affect kids. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention and uh, have a good night. Thanks.